Yo, what's up guys? It's your boy, The Gabbler Reviews, back with another video. This time I want to recap all the movies that came out in June 2023. Last month, I went to Paris, as you can see, and then when I came back, I was totally out of it. I think I caught COVID or something, but uh, for like the last two weeks of June, I was just totally out of it. And the first week of July, I was pretty much busy. So that's why you've had an absence of about a month from my channel of any content. But as of now, I am trying to play catch up and we're gonna start reviewing the big blockbusters. I didn't get to see everything, but I did get to see Transformers, Rise of the Beast, The Flash, and Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse and we are going to go through each one of these films and what I thought about all of them. Now, I want to start with Transformers Rise of the Beast. Now, that movie, as you may remember, I made a video talking about why it would make a billion dollars at the box office, and I'm here to take my L. I was totally wrong. This movie, I think it broke even, but it's nowhere near making that billion dollar mark. So I guess the Michael Bay Transformers fatigue is still strong with the audience. And as well, the reviews were not the best. They were better than the last night, but still, I guess people now really put a lot of reliance on Rotten Tomatoes and the fact that it did not even reach a fresh rating really turned a lot of people away from watching it. Now, what did I, what did I think about the movie? I thought Transformers Rise of the Beast was a step up from the last night. I don't think it was as good as Bumblebee. Uh, the way I would rank it, I'd still like the 2007 Transformers movie the best out of all of them. Um, I think this is probably third best after Transformers 2007 and Bumblebee. Um, but I still, it's close with Dark of the Moon. I did like Dark of the Moon more than most people. Uh, so I would say it's probably third or fourth in the Transformers movie ranking and uh, I haven't seen the 1986 film so that is not something that's being considered on my list uh, but the movie itself was pretty good it was flawed definitely uh, but I did enjoy the human characters a lot more in this one than I did in you know with Mark Wahlberg like he was just absolutely terrible in the Transformers movies. Um, Anthony Ramos, his character was really compelling, I felt. Now, that being said, the movie does sort of suffer from what every other Transformers movie suffers from, where it does put too much emphasis on the humans. I would prefer a Transformers live action movie, you know, somewhat like Bumblebee, where the main character is a robot and the humans are more of a side character, but this one they made Anthony Ramos the main guy, so we see him like for what, 30-40 minutes before we see any robots show up, which I think is absurd at this late date, um, like people want Transformers in a Transformers movie. But that being said, Anthony Ramos' character was a good character, so it wasn't as painful as like Mark Wahlberg or even Shia LaBeouf to a certain extent um, with just annoying characters for 30 minutes before seeing any robots. Uh, Dominic Fishback is in this. Uh, she's fine. I mean, her character was underdeveloped. Uh, her character was just kind of there as a friend, female character. Uh, I mean, she didn't annoy me, but she wasn't adding anything really of substance to the story either except for finding the uh, artifact that is the key of the movie uh, so I, fe I feel like the movie could have done without her I feel like the movie could have just been Anthony Ramos and his little brother uh, stumble upon the artifact that the villains are looking for and I think it should have just went from there so in this movie we don't have any Decepticons we have the Autobots, the Terracons, and the Maximals. And the Maximals are basically ancient Transformers that arrived on Earth during the time, the prehistoric times. And they transform into prehistoric animals, basically. Now, the Maximals, Optimus Primal is really good. Now, Ron Perlman is really good as Optimus Primal. He really does feel like a true leader. He feels like he's been in the fight for a long time. Uh, he has a cool backstory, but I feel like the backstory of the Maximals was a little bit rushed There's a little bit of it in the beginning and then you go through Anthony Ramos his storyline for 30 minutes and then the Maximals are just like uh, yeah, we need this artifact, but I kind of wish they Focus a little bit more lore on the Maximals, right? 
and the Terracons, uh, I guess some of them transform, I don't remember exactly, but I guess some of the Terracons transform into animals and some of them can transform into vehicles. But I felt like that was just, like what happened to the Decepticons, you know? Like the Decepticons, even in Bumblebee, if this movie is like not following the Michael Bay movies, but for sure this movie is following the Bumblebee movies and in the Bumblebee movies, the Decepticons were the clear villains. What's going on with the Decepticons? I kind of felt like we missed a bit of that, you know? And I personally feel like the way they went about adapting the Beast War storyline, I don't really, I'm not gonna say I hated it, like it was fine, but I felt like they should have, I, I felt like it could have been better, you know? Honestly, if this movie had been like a prequel maybe, or even just set in the same world, but I would have made maybe the Maximals the Autobots and the Decepticons uh, the Terracons, but like I would not have used the name Maximals or Terracons, I would have just use Autobots, Decepticons, and instead of Optimus Primal just using the namesake of Optimus Prime, I would have just made Optimus Prime turn into a gorilla, you know, like, I would have went all the way with Beast Wars. I would have made Megatron turn into a dinosaur. So I don't know exactly how you will weave that into modern times, or I guess in this movie's case, the 90s, but I felt like you had like a lot of characters but then the movie didn't really the really really the movie really only had character development for anthony ramos's character but for the transformers characters they didn't really delve into any of them really except i guess for optimus prime the kind optimus prime kind of had a journey into turning from this uh, cybertronian that kind of doesn't trust humans and is not a real leader yet to becoming a real leader and learning that not all humans are evil. He has that journey, but I felt like that journey is something that at this point in time, he shouldn't be going through that journey because it's established that he's been fighting this war in Cybertron, in Bumblebee. And also the fact that Optimus Primal, like Optimus Primal in the movie, they set up that the, the Maximals are old. Like they've been around since the dinosaurs have been around in in the in, on Earth, right? And the fact that he takes his namesake from Optimus Prime, because of he's like sort of like a fan of Optimus Prime, and Optimus Prime is looked up as like a legend. That tells me that Optimus Prime is older than Optimus Primal in this particular Transformers universe. So, if Optimus Prime has been the leader of the Autobots for that long. It's kind of weird to me that at this late date, he's still going through like, oh, I have to learn how to be a leader type of development, you know? Um, so I feel like, I feel like, yeah, I feel like if, if I was in charge of this movie, um, I don't know if I would set it in the 90s even, to be honest with you. I, I think I would, if Optimus Prime is really as old as they make it in, in this universe, I think I would probably uh, do something about like just say that the you know since this movie is already like a reboot of the michael bay movies uh and in bumblebee they don't really explain much i mean it, it would be kind of retconning bumblebee i guess to make it set in the prehistoric times but i don't know i, I just felt like it wasn't really it didn't take as much advantage of the Beast Wars plot that it could have, in my opinion. Now, in terms of the production quality of this movie, usually Transformers movies have a good production quality, but I did realize that in the recent ones, Bumblebee not included, but The Last Night and Age of Extinction, like the effects were awful. Like that transformation that wasn't a real transformation with the nanotech in Age of Extinction, was just awful like we're not going to these transformers movies to see nanotech we're going to these transformers movies to see cars turn into robots and jets turn into robots and them brawling each other in the middle of the city streets right um and yeah i just felt like the last couple of transformers movies have gone super lazy uh, not just with the writing but just even the production quality of them but this one i, I think it kind of goes back to basics you know like the effects are really good i was a little concerned about the how the maximals would look you know based off the trailers but when you watch it in feeders everything looks legit like the effects are proper um and looks like they did take their time with the effects on like a lot of recent blockbuster movies 
Um, so the effects and sound editing, uh, you know, it's back to the basics, back to the er, uh, late 2000s Transformers movies quality of production. Um, and yeah, this movie, uh, I was satisfied with that in terms of its uh, production quality. The locations are awesome. I, I like the globe trotting aspect of it. I think we kind of missed a bit of that in the last couple Transformers movie. Um, and yeah, like this movie, like the, the performances are great. It's just uh, like, so I will say with this movie, I do think that their heart was in the right place. Like the filmmakers were genuinely trying to make a good movie and trying to really do a lot of throwbacks and callbacks to, to classic uh, Transformers uh, cartoons for the fans. So I feel like there was a sense of genuineness to this movie that was lacking in every Transformers sequel after the 2007 film. After the 2007 film, I felt like they were purely made for like uh, commercial reasons, you know, like they felt like commercials, especially like the later you got, the more product placement was just in your face. I recall the uh, Age of Extinction uh, Bud Light scene was just, they, they didn't give a shit anymore. They were just like, this is a commercial and we don't care, we know what this is. Um, so it, would, it just lacked that genuineness and I think this movie is back to the basics of Transformers filmmaking which I really appreciated. Now Anthony Ramos, his character, I forgot his name for a bit there but his name is uh, Noah Diaz. Uh, Noah Diaz, uh, this is a spoiler alert in case you haven't seen it yet but towards the end of the movie um, he kind of, he kind of becomes a Transformers himself like he takes the parts of Mirage and and uh, is and be, gets a metal armor and fights the villain himself and I think that's really cool but my issue again is like I kind of wish they made Mirage the main character and Noah the side character like this is the thing like the thing about the Transformers movies is like we do want to see these robots you know but like we don't just we don't just want to see them fighting, we want to see them interacting with each other. I think the best scenes of the Michael Bay Transformers movies, even if you think they're horrible, I think even you have to admit, even if you don't like the, the Michael Bay Transformers movies, the best scenes in especially the 2007 films weren't necessarily when the robots were at each other's throats like fighting, but it was more like when Autobots and Autobots were having an argument or a Decepticon and a Decepticon were having an argument which those were quite rare but whenever they did happen I felt like that's when the movies were at their best but it's just that they didn't happen enough for us to connect to the characters so for example I'll give you two scenes for examples in Transformers 2007 uh, you know I used to love that movie like that was a 10 out of 10 movie when I was like 10 but now I, I do realize it's a flawed movie, but even re-watching it now, the scene that connects with me the most is like when Bumblebee is captured by Sector 7, and then the Autobots are complain are sorry, not complaining, but contemplating what their next move should be, and they are on top of a Hoover Dam, I believe, and the Autobots are, are having a debate between each other. They're saying, uh, should, why are we fighting to save these humans? These guys are savages. They don't care about anything but themselves. And then Optimus uh, tells Ironhide, I believe, were we so different? And they're young species and they have much to learn. Uh, and we can't let them fall into the scent like we did. And it's like that ideological battle between, and they weren't, you know, at each other's throats. They're all Autobots talking to each other, but they're having an ideological discussion. That is what Transformers needs more of. And that's why I believe the next Transformers film, I mean, I'd be happy to see uh, Anthony Ramos's character Noah again, but I don't think he should be the main character. I think the main character should be an Autobot or even a Decepticon. Like just make the main character a robot. And then making the main character a robot, giving them most of the screen time, we're gonna see more of those ideological debates going on. And I think that will elevate the Transformers movies into something a bit better. You know, essentially the Transformers movies, what they are at their core is that they're war movies. And in a war movie, what do you have? You have two sides and they both have their reasons for going to war, right? They both have opposing views. And I feel like the Transformers movies, they just break it down to very simplistic, like Autobots, good, Decepticons, bad. And it's like, the Decepticons almost never talk too, like it's just mostly Megatron that talks. 
the best scene of the Decepticons in the whole entire Transformers franchise is in Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, funnily enough. It's that scene between when Megatron gets revived and then he flies to the Fallen's base. And then it's that scene between the Fallen, Starscream, and Megatron. And they're kind of bickering at each other. Me Starscream thought Megatron was going to stay dead. So he and he liked that secretly and he wanted to take over the Decepticon leadership. But then when Megatron comes back, he acts all brand new. And Starscream's like, oh, I'm so relieved they're alive. And Megatron kind of gets a hint at what Starscream's game is. And he's like, no, only I am the leader of the Decepticons, even in death. So don't try this. <laughs> So disappointing. Even in death, there is no command but mine. And then they talk with the Fallen about what their motivation for what they're doing is. They're like, we need the Energons for the young Decepticon, like Transformers babies. We need to take the resources on Earth to save them. The boy will not escape us. We have him in our sights. Without more Energon, the hatchlings will keep dying. That's like one of the few times of great writing in the Transformers movies. Now, this movie is progresses more in that direction than a lot of the Michael Bay movie does. You do have the Maximals and the, the and Autobots interacting more with each other, but it's more about like it's more about like their like oh, it's more about like how to be a leader and how to win the war in their interactions than it is about what their goal is. Guys, overall, this movie, I think, was a step in the right direction for the Transformers franchise, but it's still a very flawed movie. But overall, I enjoyed myself for the most part. Uh, I liked the promise of Anthony Ramos's character, Noah, uh, for the future sequels. I like the setup that they have uh, at the end for his character and I'm not gonna say what it is in case you haven't seen it but uh yeah this movie was pretty decent I'll give it a 7 out of 10